everyone, and welcome to Ready, Reset, Go. My name is Diana Fairbanks. I'm with Northwestern Michigan College. Today, we have a conversation about jobs, training, funding, and you. So what this is, it's a series of panel discussions. Maybe you're looking for a new job or looking for uh, an upgrade to your job, and you don't know where to get started. Maybe there are some jobs out there that are available that you haven't heard of. Maybe you don't know what kind of training you need, or maybe you want to know if you can even pay for it. Well, today in these conversations, we're going to have answers to all those questions for you. We are pairing up a local employer who has good paying jobs available. We're going to connect you with the training resources you might need, and we're going to have a conversation about how to get you some additional resources to help pay for that training and help get you started on that new job. This is a series of discussions we are having throughout this series. You can find more information at nmc.edu slash reset. In every discussion, we're going to pair up a local employer with the training you need and, of course, hit that financial aid angle as well. Now, this isn't supposed to be all tops and bottoms, comprehensive, all the answers you might need. It's really just an easy conversation to see if it's something you might be interested in. And then we're going to give you the resources for you to have a conversation with a real person if you want to pursue it further. But we're going to leave that up to you because we know your time is important to you, so we don't want to overwhelm you. So let's get started today. Today, we are talking about an industrial maintenance position with Sarah Lee. And so joining us from Sarah Lee is Elaine Hansen, who is the HR Assistant Manager at Sarah Lee. Also from the Technical Division of Northwestern Michigan College is our Director, Jason Slade. Hi, Jason. And from the financial aid side of things, we have Paige Sansonetti, who is a financial aid expert here at Northwestern Michigan College. Now, let's get into talking about this industrial maintenance. Elaine, honestly, this is a job that, um, you know, it sounds familiar to me, but I'm not sure that if you asked me to describe it, I would know what it is. Tell us more about industrial maintenance, especially at Sara Lee. I mean, I know we think of Sara Lee and pies, but I don't think industrial maintenance. Tell us more. Yeah, so we have a maintenance department of 60 individuals, um, and um, we just formed an apprenticeship program um, last July um, where we have two apprentices, and, um, you know, their responsibility, um, their day looks different each, um, each day when they come in. They could be taking calls from um, the production floor to help them put out fires, troubleshooting um, areas. Um, they're also, um, you know, um, they're partnered up with a mentor, somebody that is experienced. So whether it be um, an experienced mechanic, an experienced electrician, an experienced um, refrigeration technician, they're learning it really all through our program that we offer for our apprentices. Um, you know, some, some jobs and um, projects that our apprentices worked on, um, they actually made um, their own toolboxes um, they welded and fabricated um, using um, aluminum. Um, they also um, did projects to tune up our ovens. We have very, um, you know, if you're thinking of your oven at home, we actually have, you know, magnifying that by, by thousands. Um, oh, my gosh. Here. Um, so there's, um, you know, making sure all of our equipment um, is working properly. So they have a big task. You know, I think what you said about the apprenticeship, that's something that, you know, we've all heard of and know from before, especially in some technical areas. But, you know, especially at Sarah Lee, you guys probably have some very specialized equipment that you do need to have an apprenticeship program to train the people you need, um, but also have some great partnerships throughout the community as well. When we think about those positions, um, what kind of individual are you looking for? Who might be right for a job like this? Yeah, so somebody that is hardworking and motivated. Um, it is um, positions where um, they're getting their steps in. Um, they're, you know, they're up and down stairs. They're, you know, lifting, you know, up to 50 pounds. So somebody that is eager to learn. Um, we have um, our average seniority here at our facility is about 19 years. So we have a lot of Experience, a lot of experienced mechanics that our apprentices learn from. Um, so somebody that is is willing to, you know, listen um, to the mentors and kind of soak it all, soak all the knowledge in. Um, so um, lots of opportunities um, for for any individual. And it sounds like a lot of hands on. Very hands on. Yeah, there's a lot of moving conveyor belts within our um, facility. We're about 320,000 square feet, so it's pretty large. Um, a lot of equipment um, that requires, you know, um, a lot of detail. Um, our plant's been here since 1963, and we actually mm. have equipment here that have been here since 1963. Wow. 57 years. Um, 
So it, um, it does require an individual um, to be detail oriented. Got it. Got it. Let's talk um, a little bit more brass tacks about uh, what does the job have to offer the employee? Uh, what are the hours? What are the times of days, the shifts? What kind of pay are we talking about? Yeah. So we actually, um, we operate three shifts here and our apprentices, they um, obviously they're attending classes, typically anywhere from two to three classes each semester and um, also working a full-time schedule with us. So um, you know, maybe you have a class that's scheduled during midday. So you may come in um, to work in the morning hours, leave to do class, and then come back um, in the afternoon or evening after your class finishes. So we are a bit um, very flexible, um, you know, school schedule first and then fitting in your hours with us. Um, whatever class an individual has or what they're studying, we're actually going to trigger um, special projects and assignments to match what your um, learning material is. Okay. Um, it's a great, um, you know, uh, career to go into. Um, the, the benefits are very rich, um, good paying, paying job. Okay, great. You know, um, there has been a lot in the news lately about automation and robots and maybe jobs going to other parts of the world, but this is a job that is right here in Traverse City, it sounds like, has been here for a long time, and it sounds like Sarah Lee's very invested in, in keeping that workforce here locally. Absolutely. Um, the skilled trades demand is very high um, within our region, even statewide and nationally. Um, it is a demand um, that we need good skilled tradesmen. Um, so if um, an individual is, is interested, um, I can definitely point them um, to, um, you know, some, some great contacts and um, some great, um, you know, um, jobs that we have available. Um, advancement here um, is, is awesome. Our apprentices, once they complete the program, which is four years, um, you know, there's um, room to become a mechanic, an electrician, um, a refrigeration technician, a group leader. Um, you know, those jobs all have more responsibility, hence more responsibility, better pay. Mm -hmm. um, so endless opportunities with us. I think that room to grow is really important for people here who are, you know, really looking to make a career out of it. So that's great information. Thank you so much, Elaine. You yeah. know, if you want to get started in this profession, perhaps you are thinking to yourself that maybe I need a little bit of training. And that's where Jason Slade comes in. He's our director of the tech division at NMC. And Jason, I know you work closely with employers like Sara Lee to make sure that their uh, employees are well trained. If someone is looking into becoming an industrial maintenance uh, technician, what kind of training do they need? Um, from an NMC point of view that we can help them with. So thanks for having me, Diana. I really appreciate it. Um, some of the things that you'll take note of is specific to Sarah Lee is we try to be fully invested with the company. And so we're very fortunate that Elaine brought us in. So by us, I mean our instructors, our directors, our program coordinators, and we actually walk the line. We walk through the facility. We saw what their students did. The run rate of pies is incredibly impressive. And the technology is, you mentioned automation on there. And this air leaf facility has quite a bit of automation that makes sure that a pie that comes out meet, reaches the customer the way they expect it, full round uh, in place. And that's what our technicians can do is they can actually run those control systems and, and develop them to ensure that the customer is satisfied. So when it comes to somebody that's interested in this field, there's a couple paths. One, they can go right to a lane uh, and work and apply for a job there. And then we work hand in hand with Sara Lee to develop that apprenticeship model. Or two, they can come to us as a, maybe a manufacturing student or as an engineering technician student interested in robotics and automation. And we say, hey, there's this great opportunity for you to segue into an apprenticeship. Um, and then we work with Elaine to make sure that we can make that connection and that student fits their requirements. Um, apprenticeships are, are pretty unique, um, Diana. So what we do is we work with the company and we develop a program that meets their needs. So Elaine talked about a couple different jobs there, you know, as a, as a maintenance tech, as a uh, apprentice mechanic, eventually going into maybe electrical trades or HVAC on there. And so what we did when we designed the apprenticeship is we looked at every class that NMC offered across the whole division. And then we picked classes that made sense and complemented what that job required. And then we built a stackable program so that over those four years, they gain more and more skills. So they start out, let's say in basic electrical, we get them into some fluid power. And then by the end of that program, 
they're taking more advanced industrial control systems. So the unique thing with an apprenticeship track is that we can work with the company to make sure that the classes complement what they're doing. And then you just heard Elaine say they make sure that they do a project that kind of reinforces what they're doing in class. So we're giving them on the job training and related technical instruction. And even somebody without an apprenticeship, we can still bring them into the manufacturing or engineering tech pathway, let's say PLC programming, and then hook them up with a company like Sara Lee to get into their industrial maintenance or, or mechanic apprentice track. What, I, what I'm hearing from both of you is there is a lot of flexibility and a lot of pathways, but that you're also working really closely together to find the best solution uh, for the student or potential employee, but also what's right for Sarah Lee. So I think that that partnership and, and that um, flexibility and specialization, I think, is, is really great. Jason, when it comes to this... Uh, to the student getting the education that they might need or the potential employee. You know, I think some people uh, might look at the word college and think, yeah, I don't have time. I don't have time for college. Um, but I know you do a lot to make sure that um, that classwork is also accessible to people who may have other responsibilities in their life right now. Talk to us a little bit about uh, the flexibility of formats we offer too uh, at NMC. Oh, absolutely on there. So the first thing is with many of our classes, there is a hands-on experience. We, we want the student not only to have the theory portion or understand what's going on in the background, but actually physically do it. So he or she walks into Sara Lee and is confident uh, in their skill set. Um, but we also are, are very aware that our students have busy lives and apprentices um, have even busier lives because they have those requirements at the job too. Um, so we try to make sure that the, the classes are thoughtful, that they're competency-based, so that you walk in there, you, you do a skill, you do the skill well, and then we move on to the next one. Um, we also are offering more classes in a hybrid format, um, allowing the student to take some of that lecture material, the knowledge-based component, do that on his or her own time, and then come into the lab for that experience. Um, that offers some flexibility um, there as well. We also try to be aware of busy times, um, that the apprentice may have and adjust the schedule accordingly and, and not overload them in a particular semester or if we could push a class out, um, we definitely do that. So, you know, we're looking at a, a, a multiple um, ways to deliver a class, some online, but in, in technology that's a little bit limited because we do want that hand-to-hand -hand piece or, or hands-on component. Um, and so we offer a lot of social distance, hybrid, face-to-face -face courses, and that allows them to kind of get that hands-on experience and then take it back to the job. Mm -hmm. And I bet especially uh, when things that are, are hands-on related, I think, you know, the dedication that, that the experts in your area who are instructors, talk a little bit about that um, when it comes to that personalized education, really working with a student, and ultimately really being dedicated to pairing them up to a job or career at the end of that path. Yeah, we try to offer lots of assistance uh, in a number of different forms. So when a student comes in, we, we reach out and try to establish what their goals are. If it's a student that's maybe already an apprentice at Sarah Lee, we have an apprenticeship coordinator that tries to work with Elaine, with the apprentice to develop that class list. So they get that kind of one-on-one -on -one attention. When it comes to the actual class, our instructors are really engaged. We love apprentices in our class and we love industrial maintenance techs in our class because they come in with real issues. So we don't need something out of a book. We don't mm -hmm. have to go, hey, what if? We can really pull something that happened that day at their facility and say, hey, how did you address it? Okay, it didn't work, how can we troubleshoot it? And then really use the whole class to brainstorm those ideas. And then we follow, follow the apprentice um, or the student all the way through. So we have check-ins to make sure that they're on track. And that's really important from Elaine's side at Sarah Lee and then our side as what we call the, the related technical instructor or the RTI provider on there. So we, we wanna make sure that apprentice is getting those needs met. But just as important, if they're just in a class, our instructors want to make sure that they're getting those skills that they need so that they can become a very successful mechanic at Sara Lee. Um, and so we try to keep those instructors engaged, Diana, and that's in a number of different ways. So one, they go to the facility. So we try to check in with a number of our employers in the area and pull the pieces that are common and bring those to the classroom. And then two, just as critical is Sara Lee serves on our advisory board. And so mm -hmm. they help drive our curriculum. And so if we have a class that's not meeting their needs, content that needs to be changed or scheduling issue, they're the first ones to come to us and say, hey, here's the chance for you to improve. Um, and we take those suggestions and keep trying to grow the program. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that connection with industry is so important. Um, and I know you all do have a lot of relations th relationships throughout local industries here in our region. And I think that's got to be a great resource for our students to kind of give them a leg up also. 
Oh, oh, absolutely. That allows us to all connect too. So when we're in a, in a meeting and, you know, Elaine um, and, and us, we can all bounce ideas off of what's working. We can look at other apprenticeship models and there's a lot of power in that. We can look at a, you know, company X and compare it to company Y and say, hey, we're developing this course for them. Is this something that would be useful for you? Um, and a lot of times it is. Uh, a prime example of that is we have a tolerancing uh, gd &T class. And basically what that is, is we try to verify that a certain part, a certain assembly, something's within spec. So that class we heard from a number of industry partners needed to be online. And so we're in the progress of working with our educational services here at NMC and our company sponsored employees to figure out, okay, how, what should that class look like? How long should it be? What's the duration? How do we give it to them in a format that works? And ideally, that apprentice wouldn't even leave Sarah Lee. They could potentially go in a break room, a back room. We've been in the maintenance area. There's a computer back there. They can log in and take that class right there on, That's the, great. on the job. That's great. I like that a lot. Um, you know, again, that flexibility, I think, is so important. You know, Elaine talked a little bit about the ideal kind of employee she's looking for. What are you seeing, Jason, when it comes to the kind of student who really is thriving in this? Is there is there one type of student or is there work that you can do with a lot of different kinds of personalities to make sure they're successful? So we can bring in students from a number of different tracks and have them be successful in this field. First, we can take those students that are maybe coming out of the career tech center or coming out of a high school program, you know, and they might not have a lot of skills um, if they're coming from a, a general high school program, but we can kind of upskill them and get them ready to enter that workforce. And we can almost do it in that initial semester just to give them that first baseline of skills. Somebody that's coming from the career tech center, higher skill level, they could probably enter in right away. And we've actually mm -hmm. done that um, with Sarah Lee and some other companies. But then also those students that are kind of looking for that next opportunity, Diana. We have a number that have gone on to maybe go work without going to college, maybe pursued a pathway in college that didn't quite work for them. And they kind of come back to us. And those are actually great students because they're incredibly focused. They know what they want. And apprenticeship mm -hmm. is perfect for that because it's only the classes you need to be successful on the job. And then the rest you get while you're working at the company. And so really we're looking for a student that um, is mechanically inclined or curious. I mean, it's okay mm -hmm. if you haven't done it, but you want to learn and try. And we are totally comfortable with that. Um, and then really somebody that's just eager um, to solve problems. I mean, what Elaine listed right there, that's all troubleshooting. And those are, that's that skill of just being inquisitive. How did this work? How can I fix it? Yeah, we're looking for some mechanical Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> so for folks, you know, it sounds like there's something from everybody from high school all the way through adult learners and, you know, anybody with some curiosity. And um, Jason, I bet you'd say people don't have to commit today. They just call and ask a couple questions. We'll see if there's even some room there. So I, I wouldn't turn anybody away for sure. One thing I know where there's a lot of questions about was, okay, the job sounds great. The training sounds fun and interesting, but can I pay for it? And so we're going to bring in Paige Sansonetti, who's one of our financial aid specialists at NMC. And Paige, you know, when it comes to paying for college, especially using um, some of the resources at Northwestern Michigan College, including human resources like yourself, there are really a lot more options than I think people realize. Is that true? Definitely. Um, just from Adam C., this last year, we had $1.7 million in scholarships giveaway. And out of the 92% of students that applied, they received a scholarship with the average wow. being $1,300. Wow, that's great. Uh, you know, uh, folks may, you know, say, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I if I can qualify for a scholarship. But one of the things you and I talked about earlier, there are actually a lot of scholarships that go unclaimed because nobody applied for them. Correct. We have lots of scholarships that fit every criteria, merit based, skill based, program of study, where you live, your gender, anything. There are scholarships for everyone. Mm -hmm. And scholarships, of course, you don't have to pay back. Um, and then there are grants available that you don't have to pay back. There are loans, which is another option, and some students do a combination. But there are also some new programs um, available through the state of Michigan, which some have been in the headlines recently. But I'd love to hear more from you about uh, Futures for Frontliners and then also the upcoming Michigan Reconnect. That sounds like there might be some possibilities here with these programs. Correct. But the Futures for Frontliners, that's for anybody who hasn't completed a college degree as of yet, and you are an essential worker in the spring. You can apply through the state of Michigan up till December 31st, and then you can use that program starting this spring until next fall. 
and that covers tuition and some general fees. It's a great program. Um, starting soon, we don't know the exact date, is Michigan Reconnect, which is for anyone over the age of 25 who hasn't completed a college degree. And those are both great programs through the state of Michigan. Definitely go apply. Lots of information out there. Even if you're not sure if you're going to start college in the spring or what you want to do, just apply. You know, it's out there. It takes about five minutes to fill out the application. That's great. We did talk a little bit about um, the futures for frontliners. The deadline for that is the end of 2020 calendar year, right? But you don't have to use it right away if you're not sure. So go ahead and apply for it. um, And you can find out more at nmc.edu slash frontliners. Go ahead and apply. And then if it works in your your family's path, go ahead and uh, go for it. But if it doesn't, you're no worse for wear either. But you can't hit if you don't swing, right? Is that the financial aid take home message? Oh, for sure. Definitely apply for everything. Scholarships, grants, anything you get your hands on. You know, my daughter's um, getting to be close to college age and we keep talking about the FAFSA and and I even work at a college and I'm like, oh boy, the FAFSA. Um, But remind me of all the resources that you have that if people kind of be like, oh, I don't know, there's a lot of paperwork. You are here to help. Like I don't have to, you know, be alone at this. You know, you can definitely pitch in and help us figure out how to do all the paperwork, right? Oh, for sure. Um, On our website right now, under financial aid events, you can sign up to do a FAFSA completion, just one-on-one, either through a phone call or Zoom. We also have recorded um, an information session, just briefly goes over all the types of aid available, even comparing college costs. We also have a session on scholarships, how to apply for them, how to find them. And these aren't just NMC specific. We're here Mm -hmm. to help no matter where you're going. I have to tell you, you are a very helpful department, especially, you know, it seems sometimes overwhelming, but you really do make it accessible and you really do have a lot of information out there. So thanks, Paige, for all your help and all your expertise. And I think the take home message here is if you think you're interested, go ahead and reach out to Paige and financial aid. Um, You can also reach out to Jason if you have any questions about the technical program area and Elaine over at Sarah Lee. Elaine, it sounds like you have a lot of resources available. And honestly, I feel like we buried the lead. We hardly talked about pie at all, but that has got to be a huge benefit to working at Sarah Lee. So um, thank you all so much for joining us today. Remember, this is one in a series of Ready, Reset, Go conversations we are having about local jobs in the Traverse City area that are good jobs that are available now. We're connecting you with training at NMC and of course that important financial aid element as well. We are here to help you. You can find more information at nmc.edu slash reset, R-E-S-E. And we will see you soon. Thank you.